audiobook's great. Great. Yeah. Perfect. Brilliant. Where am I, actually? This isn't my place. You, Wimkin. Where is this? Um, it's the catacombs, beneath the forest, where the city used to be. Amelda took an experimental step closer. Are you... Are you the Destroyer? Among other names, the Destroyer, the Dark Lord, the End of All Things, just titles, really. I prefer Lord Sarkaran. Do you not recognize your Lord? My divine appearance? The Destroyer lifted his hand to examine himself, and his face changed in a moment. It wasn't what he was expecting. Tracy Gregory, how are you? I'm good, Graham. How are you? Very good. And you're in South Wales? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Whereabouts? In Cardiff. And how long has the, the new book, The Goblin, well, it's called Goblin Summer now. How long has it been that's out right. now? Uh, it's been out on ebooks since April 1st. April the 1st, okay. April and 1st, yeah. on, on ebooks. And as an audio book, not long, only a few days, really, isn't it? Uh, yeah, end of last week. Yeah. I want to say. And uh, getting some big numbers, according to um, Audible. So you must yeah. be pleased with that. Very pleased. Very, very pleased. <laughs> yeah. How does this one compare to... Because this is the... This will be the third book. I'm working on a fourth for you, but this will be the third book I've done for you. But this is a totally different series. The, other, the others are, are sci-fi. This yeah. is more uh, a fantasy thing. Is this... Mm -hmm. Is this more of the kind of thing you do, or is this stretching it for you? This was something different for me. Um, doing like an outright fantasy novel is not something that I had done before. I tended to stick to, to kind of science fiction type things. Yeah. Um, so it was an interesting experience. Um, the reception seems positive, so I'm glad people seem to like it. <laughs> yeah. The thing that surprised me, because it is, a, it's a, a lit RPG. That's right, yes. What does that mean? So uh, lit RPG is a, is a genre of books that aim to emulate specifically role-playing video games. So um, characters will have access to like, there'll be particular levels and they'll be able to, they'll get specific skill points they can spend and abilities and things like that. It's about kind of the, given the impression that when you're reading the book, but also you could be playing this video game at the same time. Right. It's a very, it's a very, it's a, very, it's a niche subgenre, but it's a very popular one um, within its kind of audience. Um, there are, once you start looking into them, there are a lot of books out there in this particular field. Well, that does relate back to you to the previous books we've done together, the sci-fi ones, because they were based on on gamers as well, weren't they? So there That's is right, yes. there's definitely yeah. a common thread that runs through your work there, and. I think I told you last time when we talked about um, the the sci-fi book Star Commander series uh, last time we talked that this is an area that is is quite new to me this gaming area. So when I approached Goblin Sumner, I was like, okay, okay, well we'll see how this goes and see how it goes. And what surprised me pleasantly about it was the humour in it. It's a very yeah. funny book. Yeah, I always I wanted it to be kind of quite light-hearted yeah um, you know there's some serious things that happen in there but i wanted it to be quite a quite a light-hearted fun book that kind of i always enjoy those kind of fantasy books myself i prefer things to be a little bit more upbeat and maybe a bit funny like as, as a kid my like fantasy books of choice are all terry pratchett books so right. yeah, that's the kind of thing that i prefer in fantasy so it was always the kind of thing i was going to write when i did it yeah well, so where did the original idea for the book come from? Because to, I don't want to give too much away, but there's there's this regular guy, I suppose you'd call him Gareth, and he's a gamer and he dies and he's brought back to life in a fantasy world. So that's yeah. qu that's quite a bit to get your head around at the very beginning. But once you're up to speed with that, it's, it's fun to play with that. Uh, so where did the original idea all come from? So that 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 in particular is a, so the idea of somebody dying and then being reincarnated in a fantasy world is actually very very common within is it? the genre. Okay. Yeah, but they're almost always always they're reincarnated because they're some chosen hero, right? They're supposed to defeat the big bads and go off and do this. And I wanted very much to be that. No, he was just some random guy <laughs> who 
gets pity taken on him effectively he's not the chosen hero he's not the messiah he's not supposed to defeat the big evil overlord he's just some guy that's now stuck somewhere else that he doesn't really know anything that's going on he doesn't understand the like scenarios around him so i, I wanted to kind of play with that trope yeah quite a bit that's, that, that was always an intention at the start was to this is this is quite a common thing well let's let's play with that let's twist it and make it something else yeah he's real fish out of water in, in a yeah. to go back to a sci-fi example in a little bit like hitchhiker hikes guide to the galaxy with arthur uh, is it arthur yeah. dent in hitchhikers he's, yeah, he's a arthur bit dent. like yeah, that yeah. but but he's not He's not square like that. He wants to be the hero. And yes. the, the, the clever thing you do is you introduce, I think it's about a quarter of the way into the, into the book, you introduce the character of Sarkarin, who is mm -hmm. that kind of person, takes himself yeah. way too seriously, but in a fun way, because you do, you do root for him as well. Um, to have them, to then have the, you, you can then compare the two side by side to get, to where gareth should be and he's just not yeah. but also yeah. sarkarin is too far the other way he's 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 less than than human because gareth's got a real charm to him yeah, yeah and, and i loved that about it i really did like i say, i i went into it thinking oh this is a serious world there's gamers and things or whatever but the fun that's in it is just lovely and, and so i would recommend it to anyone i mean obviously someone who's a gamer and is into this kind of thing will love it but anyone who's who's not tried that kind of thing out this would be a great place to start i would have thought it was it was a great place for me to start yeah well there are 28 characters in the book did you know that no no i don't, I don't keep track of them i just kind of keep them in my head so i don't count them well i so have I... to i have to keep track of them because what i do is each time a new character appears in the book yeah i take that first bit of dialogue because I have to, you know, do the voice. I take that first bit of dialogue and I save it in a in a Google Drive file. So when that character comes up again, I can go back to that and, and just as a reference. I usually know what they sound like, but just to make sure I don't get mixed up, I do that. And before we did this interview, I thought, I'll, I'll check how many characters are. There's 28. And that they're the, they're the recurring characters. So there's there's other like soldiers and things that, that come and go. But there are 28 main characters. Yeah, this doesn't even include you know, the, the characters that don't have a lot of dialogue, like characters who appear because they're part of the, the deck box, uh, the, 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 yeah. uh, you know? But there are, there are 38 speaking characters in that. When you approach a, a book like this, do you lay out all your characters first or do you make them up as you go along? I kind of, I will make them up as needed, but there's an existing character that could fill that role. They From another they book? No, no, from the same, like, so a good example, so I'm working on the sequel at the moment. Um, right. That should be out in ebook, hopefully by the end of June. And there is, uh, there's a sub thread in that where there's, it's kind of like a, like a police investigation, effectively. Right. But the first book already has a character who's a guard captain. Yes. So rather than create a new character, whole cloth, it's easy to go, well, actually, yeah, that would be his role. Let's, let's use him. He's an existing person. Yes. We know. Yes. So I tend to, I tend to work like that. It's like if I need a new character, I'll create them. If there's one that already fills up. Mentioned it. even if they're a minor one off line area in the book. Yeah. I find it better than to take them and expand out upon them. Yeah. So they become a more interesting character than just a one line merchant or whatever they might be. Yeah. So where does Gareth come from? Is he you? No. He's just to an extent. I mean like the the thrust of the book is that it all the magic in the world is based on cards isn't it it's based yes. on so guns and i i have always played those card games all my life so there are certain things that he mentions that come from me but he's a bit more he's a bit pettier than i am like his drive to be a hero is because he wants to prove that well, actually i could have done this if you pick me he's, he's he's a bit a little bit full of himself sometimes yes um and i like to think i'm not like that, yeah yeah no, he's a great he's a great character, and like I say, to have Sarker and in there is like the complete opposite. Who is convinced he is a hero, and and takes it. He's a bit. Um, I would say Sarker is a bit Buzz Lightyear, really, isn't he? Is that fair? A little bit, yeah. Just, yeah, just a little a bit. bit, yeah. And he what is a, quite... what, what about the goddess Magda? Where does she come from? Well, I I always thought it would be. So again, the trope in this is that the heroes always get reincarnated by a goddess to be the children. I always thought the idea that 
what if she ended up in exactly the same situation? <laughs> she as, was in a right body she didn't like. Bit. She didn't like being so short. Right. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she's just thrown completely in the deep end as much as anybody and kind of then stuck with the, the bed that she's made effectively for somebody else. She's then got to live through the same thing. Yeah. I've always thought that would be quite a good idea. You know, if you've, you've put someone else in this situation and then uh, what if you had to do it as well? Yeah. And what, what would naturally spring from that? Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. And what's great about it is the way you take us through it, and it's quite long. I think it's it's over 13 hours of, of mm -hmm. as an audio book. You start off with the, the reincarnation process. Then he kind of finds his feet, and then they work out how this this world works. You gather some other characters along the way for them to play off, and there's a bit of needle between the characters. Yeah. And then the finale at the end, and like I say, I don't want to give too much away, but at the end they find themselves in a pretty serious situation. And then it actually starts to get quite real. And because you've spent so long, or, or I did anyway, with the characters and getting to know them, then when it really starts getting quite heavy, you really feel for them and you really you really go along with them. And I thought that was very, very smart because if you'd put them into a situation like that at the beginning before you really knew them, you couldn't empathize with the situation they were in. But then mm -hmm. when it really gets there, it's it's really, really good. You've done a really nice job on this and I enjoyed every second of narrating. I really did. Um, it was it was good stuff. Are you pleased with the way it turned out? Very. Yeah, I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. Yeah. yeah. And how about the audio kind of, the audiobook version? Is that okay? Yeah, audiobook's great. Great. Yeah. Perfect. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the beginning of the video sorted. Yeah. 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 When, when, when I put it on. And and how about you personally? You're still holding down a full time job? At at the moment. Yeah. Where do yeah, you find the it. time to write? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just kind of do it when I can. Just fit, try and fit it in around. You can kind of, you have to give up other stuff to do it. Ultimately. Yeah. And yeah. writing is time not spent watching TV or playing video games or whatever you might otherwise be doing. You've got to, you've got to realize that there's like a sacrifice that needs to be made there time wise. Yeah. Yeah. But and... that, that's the price you pay ultimately. You know, it's, it's worth it in the end. Yeah. And you're working on the sequel right now? Yes, yeah, the sequel it's about it's about two thirds done. Okay. So like I said, it should be well, should be done kind of the the draft version by star next week and then it'll be the case of editing it ready to be finished. And it should, fingers crossed, be finished by the end of June. Yeah. Provided, you know, life doesn't get in the way. <laughs> like that. And do you just work on one book at a time? Yeah. Yeah, I just do one book at a time. Yeah. Um I find that easier for me, but I find I will kind of shift between books. So I won't just do like book one, book two, book three. I'll do book one in one series, and then I'll have to do another book in another series. So that I kind of, when I come to the, the sequel, I'm fresh then. I've had time to think about like ideas and things I want to put in it because I've been working on something different. Okay, you just need a little bit of space from it. You get too close to it. Yeah, like, like I did Goblin Summoner book one, finished that. Yeah. Um, and then I went and did the real time Star Commander book three, which would be what you're. I'm working on working that right on now. Yeah. And I'm now about, that's finished. Then I went. I think I'm about halfway into that right now. Yeah. Yeah. So once that was finished writing, then I went back on to Goblin some of the two. Yeah. Because I kind of refresh myself because it's something different, different characters, different world. And yeah. then when I come back with a new book, I'm ready to go then and work on it. I'm not not worn myself out of using up all my previous ideas. Yeah, but when you when you're working on one, you work on that one exclusively until it's done. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. I'm different with the audio books, but obviously I'm not having to create anything other than voices. So I work on right now. I'm working on seven, and I work mm. on like this morning. I worked on uh, I worked on one about Jeffrey Epstein. Um, <laughs> then I've just finished working on uh, Star Commander three, um, and then. We'll have this chat, and then this evening I'll work on. Um, it's a, it's, it's number six in a series of some soldiers in Afghanistan. So because I just like to just, 
you know mix it up a bit just just yeah. have a, have a day where i'm doing all sorts of different things but like i say that's because i haven't got the pressure of a blank piece of paper or a blank screen in today's parlance um to, to actually come up and 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 create the things so do you know when you're doing them like i say goblin summon is like 13 hours long did you know it was yeah. going to be that long because the 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 sci-fi ones the um uh, star commander books so far the first two i think they were what like six or seven hours no more than eight yeah yeah. Uh, for this one to be 13 was a was a big jump. I think when I saw it, I said, to you, can you make the, can you put a nice long deadline on that? And I think you, I can't remember where you put it, but I think you gave me a couple of months to get it done. Um, did you know going into it that it was going to take that long to get everything? Because I um, think it was, I don't think it's too long. I think it's the perfect length. Like I said earlier, the way that you bring people through and you build that relationship with the characters, because then when you get to the finale, you really need that to know them better to 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 really enjoy it properly did you know it was going to take that long to make to make the thing work yeah so the book is in is intentionally the length it is so when i'm obviously i have my ideas and i write but before i approach it i kind of look at other books in the genre what kind of length are they yeah what kind of what kind of covers have they got all this kind of thing all that kind of research because obviously you want to make a you know an original story that everybody loves but there are reader expectations that you should bear in mind when you're writing a book like fantasy novels are in general longer than most books right and that's okay. what fantasy readers expect if your book's too short then a lot of people won't pick it up because they want a big hefty book to read yeah and likewise if it's too long they're not going to pick it up because it's like 600 hours or whatever <laughs> it is you know yeah yeah you've got to so yeah you've got to know what readers expect going in so that you've kind of got everything, all your ducks in a row before you start writing the book. Um, you you see it a lot. In, obviously I spend a lot of time in authors groups and things online, and it's a really common mistake for new authors to make to want to go in and write something wholly original, which is is fine, but then there's no market for it and no one wants to buy it, which yeah. is a shame. Because I'm sure there are thousands of excellent stories out there. But at the end of the day, if you want to keep being able to write and do it, you've got to make a good creative piece and a piece of art, but also a, a product that needs to be saleable. Yeah. You know? And it is part of that. It was always, I know fantasy books are of between this kind of length boundary. Yeah. So therefore, I'm going to aim to write the novel between that same length boundary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just great. I loved it. I really enjoyed doing it. Thanks for choosing me to do it. And, uh, I hope you choose me for the sequel as well, because I'm well, up for that. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> I'm up for that too. I'm sure it'll be great. The book is called Goblin Summoner, and it's by Tracy Gregory. And if you would like a free copy, if you are one of the next 20 people to email me, if you look in the blurb down below, if you're watching this on YouTube, in the YouTube blurb, if you're not watching it on YouTube, if it's embedded somewhere, then, you know, open the YouTube version of it. In the YouTube blurb right there is my email address which is graham at macmedia.co.uk, but the, it's all down there. You can click it. The next 20 people to email me and just ask for a free download of the audio book, I'll send it you for free. No strings attached, nothing. You don't have to do anything. Just email me and say, hey, I'd love a free copy of Goblin Summer. I'd like to check it out. And if you're one of the first 20, I'll do that for you. So make sure you get onto that. And you don't have to, but if you write as a nice review, that would be appreciated if you enjoyed the book too. That would be good. But you don't have to. There's no strings attached. Click on the email there. And uh, first 20 people and I'll send you a, a code where you can download the book for free. Goblin Summoner. It's Tracy Gregory. Tracy, great to catch up with you again. All the best, mate. All the best. <laughs>